Section 4.8 is on quadratic inequalities, which is when we have to shade the parabolas that we graph. So this video is just a refresher on the three different forms of parabolas and how we graph each one. So to start, this is a standard form. In standard form, uh, which is ax squared plus bx plus c, we begin by finding the axis of symmetry. Equation for axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a. For this problem, it would be negative 2 over 2 times 1, and we get an axis of symmetry of negative 1. Next, we'd want to find a vertex. The vertex always lies on the axis of symmetry, which means we're just going to plug in that negative 1 for all these x's here. So negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 plus 3 gives us positive 2. We can go ahead and put our vertex on the graph at this point, so negative 1, positive 2, and we can use the pattern to fill out the rest of our parabola. Now, because of this sign here, we're going to have a dotted parabola. Not my best parabola, but you get it. Kind of hard to draw, draw on this tablet. And when we shade it, right, we have a couple of different options. So first, we can plug in a point. An easy point to plug in is always 0, 0. So if we plug in the point 0, 0 down here, we'd have 0 for the y. This is gone, this is gone, is greater than 3. 0 is not greater than 3. So this whole section, which includes 0, 0, is false. We'd be shading inside the parabola. We can also just use the above or below trick. We're shading above the graph. Above the graph is on the inside. So shade on the inside of the parabola. And that would be our answer. In some cases, we'll have systems of quadratics where we have more than one on the same graph. And just like systems of equality, inequalities, the solution is where both of the shadings overlap each other. So the top equation here was an intercept form. It's easy to pick out the two intercepts or the roots for this function. And it's the opposites of these two numbers inside the parentheses here. So we have a root at negative 2 and another root at negative 4. That's telling us that we have x-intercepts at negative 2 and negative 4. We can also figure out what the vertex is. The vertex is always exactly in between those two. So we have a, um, an axis of symmetry at negative 3. If we plug in negative 3, we would have negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Negative 3 plus 4 is positive 1. I multiply those two together and we get negative 1. So we have a vertex at negative 3, negative 1. We have those two roots. And at this point, we can really just follow the pattern to plot out the rest of our parabola. So our two roots here, the vertex, and then just continue that pattern up. So we did the plus 1 with the roots, plus 3, plus 5. Okay, And then this is going to be a solid line. All right. Now, this next equation is in vertex form. The vertex is the opposite of this number, same for this one. So we have a vertex of negative 1, positive 1. Once we have that, we're going to plot the vertex and, just like usual, follow the pattern to fill out the parabola. So we have negative 1, positive 1, up 1, up 3, up 5. This is also a solid line because we have a greater than or equal to sign. All right, so now we have to figure out the shading. So this top graph has uh, a less than or equal to sign. The top graph is the green parabola, and the less than sign means that we're shading below the parabola. So below is underneath here or outside the parabola. Okay, this bottom equation is a greater than or equal to sign. We're shading above that red parabola. So above, in this case, would be inside the red one. So now the question is, what portion of the graph sh is shaded by both of these parabolas? And the answer is, it is this section right in between the two. Okay, so just like compound inequalities um, or system of inequalities where we're looking for the overlap, we're doing the same thing when we have multiple uh, quadratics or multiple parabolas that are shaded.